tuned in to the Politics Podcast, <laughs> your home for St. Louis politics. <laughs> What's going on, St. Louis? It's your boy Terry, and I'm back. Back for another edition of the Politics Podcast. And just like every week, we got a special guest. This week, my man is in the studio right next to me. We're going to get right into it. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to the Politics Podcast. If you are listening on Apple Music, Amazon Music, 88.1, The Truth, Pie Bean, all my listeners and viewers out there on Facebook Live and YouTube, we appreciate you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you are on YouTube. We appreciate you. Got a real good show today. But before we get into it, I'd like to take a pause. Uh, We lost a giant in the St. Louis community. She served in St. Louis County, but was known all over. Uh, She was a pillar of the community. Uh, Started off just as a regular citizen, just a concerned citizen that was involved in uh, community work. Um, did some things with the university city school board. Um, then she became a committee woman and then she ultimately became the first African American female to serve on St. Louis County council. So we want to take a quick pause, just a quick pause, um, to remember the life of the honorable councilwoman Hazel Irby. So we'll go ahead and Take a, a a moment of silence for her. And there it is. Uh, she'll definitely be missed. Uh, Hazel Irby has had an impact on a lot of folks' lives, uh, particularly young people. Uh, she took a liking to the young folks and made sure she supported all of us in the community. Um, everybody um that's in politics right now or was in politics has their own hazel herbal hazel herby story um of how they met her how they've uh grown to know her and what they've taken from her so uh we salute um the honorable uh hazel herby uh tomorrow there will be a balloon release um let me see if not tomorrow actually today i'm tripping is, um, her funeral arrangements have uh, been put out as well. I actually, um, I actually say that at the end of uh, of our show, um, so everybody has the funeral arrangements and everything. I gotta pull it up, you know. Gotta pull it up. But with that being said, it's a lot of a lot of things going on in the city of St. Louis, St. Louis County, um, and the best way to get good answers is to go directly to the source. Don't you agree? Uh, So we have a, like I told you, we have a special guest uh, in our um, studio today. A very good friend of mine, a little brother to me. Um, You know, I learned things from him and I'm sure he takes some things from me. Uh, you know, um, a, a eager young man, probably one of the cleanest brothers I've seen in politics. Uh, <laughs> you know, t- today I'm I'm actually surprised to see my man dressed down today. Um, uh, because every time I see this brother, no matter if it's a community cleanup, a community event, or just down at the board of aldermen, this young brother is clean, sharp to the T. Um. And that's a good trait to have, you know, cleansiness is what is, is next to godliness. So, um, we got my man, uh, Alderman, uh, John Collins, Muhammad from the 21st ward, 21st ward, 21st ward. Uh, and so he's in the studio with us today and we're going to discuss a few, uh, hot topics, uh, that are going on. And, and then you also gonna get a chance to, uh, Know who John Collins Muhammad is if you if you don't already know who he is. 
a uh, very interesting character. <laughs> <laughs> but this is my guy. You know, I know him on a personal level as well. Yeah. Um, and we we've been in uh, many of fights together. Um, more recently, uh, this last uh, alderman run uh, for re-election he just yeah. had. <laughs> um, so give it up for my man. Uh, John Collins Muhammad, he is in the building. We are so excited to have you, John, man. Man, welcome to the Politics Podcast, man. How man, you doing? Man, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Sir. I'm glad to be here with you, my big bro. Oh, yeah, man. It's always good when we get together. It's yeah. always a good time, a man. So uh, let, let the audience know who uh, who Alderman John Collins Muhammad is. Like, How did you get to this point? How did you get to Alderman? Um, and just kind of give <laughs> us a, a, a yeah. brief backstory. On uh on how you became Alderman John Collins Muhammad versus just John Collins. <laughs> I try to make it brief. <laughs> um, I've always been in love with politics uh, from an early age. Uh, I don't know what it was that caught my attention. Well, I do. That's a lie. I actually do. Um, I was a high school student, and I met this state representative named Rodney Hubbard. Uh, I'm in transition from. Uh, graduating on my way to Lincoln University, yo, I'm a model too. That's right. On my way to Lincoln University, uh, and I meet Rodney Hubbard, and he say he a state rep, man. I'm like, yo, what is that? I don't even know what, what's that. What that mean? <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> right. uh, then he starts to tell him, he's like, I, I changed. His exact words was, I changed people's lives, mm. and mm. I remembered that. Uh, and I met him again about two months later, and he remembered my name. Mm which was deep. He was like, Hey, what's going on, John? That's what's up. Okay. (laughs) So, uh, I get to Lincoln university. I start interning for Rodney Hubbard. I later interned for, uh, another area state representative TD Alameen, uh, did some work under Jamila Nasheed as well. And just from there, my uh, love for politics grow, uh, uh, and just blossomed. That's what's up. Uh, it, it just cultivated in me because, it's almost like what Dr. King said uh, in his famous speech. It's that first urgency of now. Uh, and when I looked at those, uh, you know, those figures that I seen that were that were elected officials, that were politicians, uh, even you uh, and, and so many others. Charlie Dooley was one. Uh, Michael McMillan was one. Freeman Bosley was one. When I seen all the work that they did, how they carried themselves and a perception in the community, I'm like, yo, I'm going to be a part of that. Mm hmm. Uh, uh, I want to play a small role in changing the narrative and making my community better, uh, and that's how I ended up here. And so, what, and so, what you said was was kind of very important, man. Um, you know, when we talk about raising our kids, um, honing into the talents of of the youth in the community, they need a positive figure that they can see. Um, doing something positive, somebody that's doing something powerful. Um, you know, a lot of times we don't see uh, black men um, in a positive light in our communities. And so uh, what you just explained was you saw those figures and you wanted to be like them. Um, you wanted to be better than them. Um, you want to do some of the things that they did. And, and that is what uh, motivated you uh to get into politics and become a public servant do i have that right you have it down (laughs) packed down packed man didn't miss a beat that's what's up so you uh so you grew up on the north side grew up on the north side all my life i grew up in the ville neighborhood uh the historic fourth ward at that time (laughs) i remember i remember the ottoman back then his name was mike mitchell Mm. uh and of course, it, and of course, now the, the the former late Alderman who recently passed not too long ago, Alderman Sam Moore. Salute uh, to him. Grew up on the North Side. Uh, I loved it. Like I'm a, I'm a true North Side kid. When you talk about shopping or shoplifting out of Regal Market <laughs> at a young age, that was me. Uh, <laughs> playing basketball at Fairground Park, that was me. Uh, man, just having fun with all the kids on your block, that was me. Uh, I love North City, man. Uh, in North City, I've seen amazing things happen. Uh, and i just seen change happen with ordinary people who just believe in a community. And they don't believe in changing a zip code. Mm-hmm. They believe in changing a community. And I love North St. Louis. Uh, so, yeah, grew up in the Ville, uh, the Fourth Ward. Uh, moved uh, my freshman year of college, actually. Mm-hmm. I moved to the 21st Ward in the O'Fallon neighborhood. 
but I would not want to be anywhere else in the world. Uh, like when I travel, uh, when I go to different cities and different states, uh, either it's at a conference or even just on personal business, mm-hmm. and people always ask, where are you from? I'm from the nor- North City. That's what North I always city. say, North <laughs> City. Uh, where is that? St. Louis? St. Louis, USA? I say something like that to that effect because North St. Louis played a tremendous role uh, in my life. Uh, it was impactful on me, just the people I met, the experiences I went through, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and just what I seen on a daily basis, the good and the bad. Uh, and I always want to carry that with me wherever I go. So I'm proud to say, hey, I'm I'm John Collins Muhammad. I'm from North St. Louis. That's what's up. Yeah. So John, when you uh when you did decide that you wanted to get into politics, um, <laughs> you said I'm gonna raise my hand and I'm running for state rep. Yeah, that was your yeah. first. That was your first run at it. Yeah, that was my first go, man. And, and, and you learned quick, didn't you? <laughs> I did, and, and I, I, I say that because because I was on the same path when I when I first started. You know, uh, to be honest, uh, when when I first got into politics, I, I didn't I knew I wanted to serve. I just didn't know in what capacity, and I just picked the office. You know that I thought I, I could be effective in, and state rep just sounded like. <laughs> Oh man, I'm finna change not only the community but the whole state. You know when you hear that. <laughs> yeah. But once you get educated on the cans and canks, mm-hmm. the hows mm-hmm. and the how nots, mm-hmm. um, come on with it. and the processes and, and what you what, you know what you what you can actually do in these positions, man, and 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 it's a wake up call. Um, a loss is a wake up call as well. You know, I ran against a uh three-term incumbent came within a couple of hundred votes but i stayed motivated and um and i ran for something local uh, you know i ran for school board first that was the first office that i was able to win yeah. um but that came due to relationships so <laughs> so when you did run for state rep you know you're unsuccessful um you know, the outcome wasn't what you wanted it to be. Uh, what, what what did you learn from that whole experience uh, when you ran for state rep? Man, it was a man. It was a surreal moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I couldn't even describe my feelings at that time in that moment when I found out I lost. Mm-hmm. Um, it was around eleven o'clock at night, eleven thirty, eleven forty-five. I'm waiting for the results. The results come in. Uh, I lost to. He's my good friend now, mm-hmm. uh, Steve Roberts. Mm-hmm. The new state senator from the fifth district of uh of uh, the state of Missouri in St. Louis. So shout out to him. Um, we ran against each other, yeah. and I lost by uh, it, was, it was a few hundred votes. Mm-hmm. It was it was close. Yeah. Uh, and I always, in the back of my mind, I knew I was always going to win. Mm-hmm. That's what I knew. I was going to win, but I also knew, John, you're going to lose. Yeah. So like, it was just a surreal moment. So when I seen the numbers, I'm like. Man, how did I lose? Right. But that counter reaction was, I got so many people to believe in me and vote for me for the first time. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yep. Um, yeah. So man, I, I ran for state rep because, uh, Matt, you know, I was just eager and I was ready. I thought it was my time. Um, I'm like, who, who can represent my, you know, who can represent my hood better than me? Right. Who, who gonna go to Jeff City? Who gonna, uh, who gonna do whatever they gotta do? Uh, don't hold back. Don't fold and just be them. Uh, unapologetically, mm-hmm. I thought that was me. Uh, that's why I ran. Uh, and in the process of running and all things, I'm finding, cause, you know, I was telling people I was going to bring rainbows in the sky. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> hey, you're going to see unicorns in the street if you vote for me. That's what I was saying. Right. I mean, really, mm-hmm. uh, because I believe that I could do those things right. without even knowing the real processes like you talked about, knowing what to do and what you can't do, uh, how to do it and how not to do it. Right. Um, but in, in, in saying that, not not to intentionally lie to voters, but I'm telling voters what I really want to see happen, right? And I'm a fight to make it happen. Mm-hmm. So I believe I'm gonna make it happen, right. right? Uh, but I learned that 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 our voters, man, um, they just want to see they want to see realism, mm-hmm. they want to see authenticity, yeah, they want to see results, but they're not expecting things to change overnight. We all want that to happen, but no, none of us are expecting things to change overnight. We just want to see those small steps uh, towards progress, towards development, towards uplifting, 
uh, towards uh, social economical development. Uh, that's what we want to see. So as long as your elected official, your community leader, your local activists, as long as they are doing those things and fighting for those things, the people are going to be satisfied. Uh, and I truly believe that our communities are actually going to take care of themselves. Right? Uh, our communities are not going to be stuck in poverty forever. They're not going to be stuck in these least uh, economically uh, conditions forever. Eventually, you're going to see houses pop up. You're going to see families move back. You're going to see new development, whether it's retail, commercial, or residential. All these things will come back to your community. Uh, you just got to do your part. Right. And if that part is uh, you, you picking up trash, mm -hmm. make sure you do it. If your part is you, you voting religiously every election cycle, then do it. If it's you uh you know uh mentoring a local community group like you do yeah. you know then do it whatever that role is and as long as we each each of us is doing our part uh independently mm -hmm. then collectively you know we gonna be there and we gonna make it uh so running for state rep taught me that lesson and you know one thing i noticed uh you know when you when when the election was over um of course you took a little time for yourself uh, cause you gotta, you gotta self reflect after, <laughs> after you, after you take your wounds or whatever, you yeah. take your lumps. But the, the one thing I admired about you, John, man, um, uh, you called me, man. And you said, man, I'm running for Alderman. <laughs> like immediately. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think that race yeah, was, was, was right. It was right after. Right. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was like, you took all of that fight and that motivation and said, you know what? These 2,000, 3,000 people that voted for me mm -hmm. want me to represent them. And so yeah. this is an opportunity for me to represent them on a local uh, level. Um, yeah. I already laid the groundwork. Uh, the people know me. Um, you was, I mean, you was busting your butt, man. That's one thing I can say. Can't nobody in the city of St. Louis say they work harder than John Collins Muhammad when it comes to knocking <laughs> on them doors, man. Because, bro, you out there until I mean the sun be down and you still knocking on doors, still man. Going. And that, and that was that. That's one thing I really, really was like, man. This kid really got it, man. And you know, if he, if he's willing to work this hard to get elected, I already know what he gonna do once he get elected. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. that was one thing I always admired about you, man. And so appreciate it. Man. So after the so after. State rep. State rep. Yeah. You ran for Alderman. You filed. Um, and who who are who are so who seat <laughs> who seat was the who was yeah. occupying that seat uh, when you when you ran? Man, it was uh Antonio French. Okay. Uh, he's been Alderman since two thousand and nine. Okay. Two thousand and nine he ran, ran again for re election and won uh in two thousand and twelve. Uh then he decided to run for, for mayor. Okay. So uh he was oh, so you ran you ran as you ran while the mayor's race was going yeah. on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, so, I get I get them all confused, but I. Oh man, we all do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He uh, it was a surprise to everyone. He uh, he didn't file for alderman. He mm -hmm. filed for mayor. Uh, and I got a couple of calls from a couple of key uh community leaders uh who who was with me when I ran for state rep, mm -hmm. and they saying, "Hey John, this is it. Yeah. Hey son, come on." Mm -hmm. Hey, let's do it. Uh, a few state representatives called me mm -hmm. uh, and actually said, hey, this is it. Yeah. We with you. Let's do it. Um, and at first I'm like, nah, because like I was focused on being state, state rep. rep. Yeah. Right. I'm like, nah, <laughs> I'm going to be state rep. Uh, then I actually uh, <laughs> went to go vote in the in a general election in mm -hmm. 2016, went to go vote. Uh, and this is in November. And I'm in the polling place. Uh, voting at my local polling place, Yateman Middle School. And I, I counted, it was about 13 or 14, maybe 13 or 14 people that was like, are you going to run for Alderman? Uh, and they just stuck with me. I, I went home, talked over with my family, uh, talked with uh, uh, some of my personal uh, mentor. I talked to you, yeah. <laughs> actually. Yeah. Uh, talked to uh, Minister Donald Muhammad, mm -hmm. uh, 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 my leader in the Nation of Islam. Uh, and we like, okay, this is it. So I put my name on the ballot. Uh, then I end up running. Uh, but again, I didn't really want to. Mm. I wanted to be in Jeff City. And the, and the crazy thing is, I don't even know why yes. I wanted to be in Jeff City. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to be in Jeff City. I feel like it was I had unfinished business. Mm -hmm. I lost state rep. No, I got to win state rep. Right. I can't take an L. That's how I looked at it at that time. 
I was young. I was 20, 25, 24, 25. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so 2017, I run for Alderman and I get it. Uh, and I was, I was, I was honestly optimistic about running for Alderman when I did put my name on a ballot. Mm -hmm. When I ran for state rep, the, the, most of my votes came from this ward, mm -hmm. this one ward. So out of the, man, out of the nine wards in the city, you know, more than half of my votes came from the 21st. From the 21st ward. So I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I, I got a base in this ward. Right. This ward believe in me. Uh, so I had to say to myself, if they believe in you, then you got to believe in this ward. Right. You got to go take it. You got to go get it. And you got to work if you get it. Once you get it, you got to put in the real work. Uh, and that's been my mindset every day. And so now you're currently in your second yeah. term, right? My second term. Man, it seemed like you've been an alderman for a long time, much longer than Man. much longer than because you all's terms are what four years? Four years. Yeah. Yes. So, so you, so you win, um, alderman. What was the, what was the aha moment once you became alderman? Like you won alderman, you sworn in, everybody's happy, yay! We on Facebook and everybody's yeah. praising. But then the work starts. Yeah. What was that eye-opening moment that you didn't see before you became an alderman that you that you didn't know was your responsibility? Or you was like, dang, this different. Yeah. You know, like what was that yeah. I, what was that moment? What was that moment? Can you think of a I can't. can you think of an aha um, moment? I remember I became an alderman. I remember the first call I got. I actually I wasn't even sworn in yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just won. <laughs> uh, and I got a call from a resident. I remember the address 4269 Redbud Avenue. Mm. Um, and she was on the verge of losing her house. This, this uh, senior was. Uh, and she had been, and she was on the verge of losing her house for the last three years. Mm -hmm. And she kept consistently reaching out to City Hall, consistently reaching out to the alderman. Uh, and she couldn't get, you no, know, she didn't get a good, she didn't get the feedback she wanted. Right. Uh, she called me. And, you know, again, I, I won. I'm like, oh, I can do anything and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the cape came yeah, on. Yeah, the cape came <laughs> on. Yeah. Um, and I said, oh, you're not losing your house. Like, that's, like that was my first uh, That was my first response automatically. Oh, you're not losing your house. Mm -hmm. In my head, I don't know what's going on. Right. I don't know. It's like from Adam and Eve. <laughs> uh, I don't know what this process even looked like. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how you could save somebody's house. I had no clue. Right. Um, uh, I called Marilita Cruza. Mm -hmm. She she wasn't even sworn in yet, actually. Mm -hmm. We both had just won our uh, respective elections, and we did not get sworn in yet until that next month. Mm -hmm. uh, this was still in in, in, in March. <laughs> so I'm not even all of it yet. Yeah. Yeah, She's not the mayor. I called her, and I explained to her the problem. Uh, and her being a former alderman uh, for, for, man, 28 years, mm. 29 years mm. uh, in the Central West End and 28th Ward, she kind of knew what to do, how to do it, and who I need to talk to. Right. So she put me in contact with the right people. Because uh, I, I called. I'm like, hey, this is John Muhammad. I'm the new alderman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm the new alderman at 21st Ward. I need you to return my call. Right. <laughs> Whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, she put in a couple of calls for me, and I got that phone call back. Uh, man, you know, I never told anybody this story. Mm -hmm. No one knows this story. Uh, only on the politics podcast. Baby. That's it. Come on with it. <laughs> um, so she put in a couple of calls. They call me back and they say, Hey, John, how can we help you? Mm -hmm. I explained to the situation. Uh, and man, the lady was able to keep her house. She, she still lives there today. Uh, she actually bought a couple of houses uh, that's next to her with my dollar housing program, by the way, that we passed uh, in 2019. She bought a couple of houses adjacent to her and 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 but she was able to keep her home. She was able to stay in her community. And when she when I seen a look on her face of man, you helped me. Right. Like this is the first time an elected official ever helped me. Mm -hmm. Uh I was like, oh, that feel like that feeling I got. Right. I was like, that's it. I, I want I want to keep feeling that same energy. I want to mm -hmm. keep feeling that same feeling. And I want people to look at me the same way she did, like. Thank you. Right. Uh, well, she didn't have to say thank you. You know, like, that's my job. Like my job is to help. My job is to be that first line of defense uh, for the people in my community. So I just felt like I was doing my job. But, but man, I just, I remember that feeling though, and I was just I was feeling myself too. I'm like, <laughs> oh man, that 
the cake really came yeah, that out. Cake, yeah, the cake came. I was like, oh man, <laughs> oh man, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, shout out to to the former mayor of the city of St. Louis, Lida Cruz, and she helped me out with that. Me and her, we did not see out of eye a lot in City <laughs> Hall, but she definitely helped me out with that, and I do appreciate you, and I thank you for that, Madam Mayor. And you know that's a good segue too, man, because uh, you, you said something that was that was profound and interesting um, and true. Um, you don't see eye to eye with everybody uh, in this business uh, when when you're in politics, when you're serving as a body. You know um, that whole team aspect uh, is kind of hard to come by um, when you have different interests. When you have different issues, like if your issues are different from the issues in the 18th Ward or, right. or whatever, um, you fighting for your people. Right. You fighting for what um, mm -hmm. is best for them. Um, mm -hmm. And so when you do have those disagreements with your colleagues, uh, what are some of the what are some of the ways uh, you kind of come to a, a happy medium? So so everybody comes out a winner. Uh, and I, and I know it don't happen all the time, but, um, just kind of give us some mm -hmm. small, a small example of, of, of being able to work, uh, with another, <laughs> you know, work across the aisle, you know, <laughs> be, just being able to work with your colleagues, yeah. um, to get something done, um, for, for your community when you don't see eye to eye with them, man, you have an example of, of, yeah, of that. Man. It's, uh, you know, you say it all the time, man. All politics is local. Yeah. Uh, so, like, understanding that if if we don't work together at the local level, regardless of the, regardless of uh, our different perspectives, our different opinions, or our different agendas, if we're not working together to do something mm -hmm. for everyone's neighborhood that will impact everybody in the city, then then we just hear racing space. We hear racing time. Uh, so. With me, and I, and I had to learn this, man. Uh, I had to learn how to disagree without being disagreeable. Mm -hmm. I mean, my first, I was going to say my first couple of years, but that's a lie, man. Uh, right up until a few months ago, actually, I'll be <laughs> real. Right up until a few months ago, if you didn't uh, if you didn't vote the way I thought you should have voted, mm -hmm. oh, man, I'm, I'm coming at you. I'm going at you. And, and that was just creating bad relationships, right? For no reason. And, and, and knowing that we all are for the same thing, we all just got different opinions. Right. Uh, and we got different routes uh, to, to go about it. You know, if if I leave here right now, I can take I can take eight different ways to get to my house. Mm -hmm. Eight different ways, mm -hmm. right? Uh, no matter which way I take, I'm going to still end up at home. Right. So finally realizing that, right, no matter... Uh, which way someone may take to get to a destination, as long as the destination is the same place, then hey, we're gonna be we're gonna be in the same we're gonna be at the same destination. We on the same path. Your way may take a little longer, mine's gonna take a little less, and maybe vice versa. Right. But we going to the we going to the same place. Going right? to the same place. So finally understanding that man, and 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 now trying to trying to work with everyone just to get small things done, small things and big things, uh, has been an eye opener, right? Because you said it. What what impacts my ward may not impact a ward that's separated by one park, right? Mm -hmm. or, or 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 a ward that's separated by a couple of streets, right? And it's right next to me. Mm -hmm. But that ward may not experience crime the way my ward experienced crime, or it may not experience uh, homelessness the way my ward experienced homelessness, right? So many different issues uh, that impacts the entire city, but just has a different gr uh, grab hold of different pockets of communities or wards. Mm -hmm. Um, so just working with each other, man. Uh, and that's something that I'm proud of the black caucus for doing. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm proud to be a member of the African-American automatic caucus, uh, uh, the caucus that consists of aldermen, black aldermen from the wards in the city of St. Louis. Uh, I've seen us work together at some, some crucial points. Yeah. Uh, I've seen us yell and almost throw things at each other right behind closed doors because we are just, we are passionate and, you know, we all got our different perspectives. Right. Uh, but I've seen us work together at some key moments from passing uh, minority inclusion legislation mm -hmm. to passing uh, uh, a racial equity lens for the city of St. Louis to to examine city government and how it's being equitable mm -hmm. to 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 throwing millions of dollars into development in certain wards. I've seen us work together so many times, man. Uh, 
and it, and it just shows you what can be done. Like right. it's a microcosm of what can be done mm-hmm. continuously if we keep that same energy and if we just be mindful that, hey, they here to do a job. I'm here to do a job. They job gonna be different than mine, but can they help me do mine better? Can I help them do theirs better? Uh, and can we deliver? Can yeah. we deliver for the people? Can we deliver for for the city of St. Louis? Uh, and specifically, uh, can we deliver for North St. Louis? And if you're just tuning in, uh, we're joined today on the Politics Podcast with Alderman John Collins Muhammad. We're going to take a quick, quick, quick break. And it. we'll be right back because we're going to get down to business. <laughs> business. This is the Hip Hop Gardener from Blackberry Landscaping. And when I'm ever listening to an app or podcast shows, I'm listening to the hottest show in the loop, the Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. <laughs> You better ask somebody. What up, St. Louis? This is your committee man, Farrakhan Shigog. You're tuned into a politics podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. This is Keila Evans Music. You're tuned into the Politic Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. Tuned in to the Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. We are back. Like to welcome you if you're just tuning in to the Politics Podcast, having a real good conversation with the alderman, the gentleman from the 21st Ward, John Collins Muhammad. Well, John, we know a little bit about you and how you got started. <laughs> yeah. Now you're here. I'm here. And, uh, you know, our community is going through so much right now with uh, gun violence, uh, with poverty. And we are in the middle of a pandemic. Or some people think we're on the tail end of the pandemic. But mm-hmm. um, I think uh, we're still a long way. Uh, off and uh, in that same vein, uh, when you have pandemics or tragedies, funding comes. <laughs> and hey. so, um, you know, just recently we were able to uh, elect a Democratic um, president. Um, we were able to elect a majority Democrat Senate. Uh, well, a tie. Uh, with a tiebreaker because we, we control the, um, vice president, the vice presidency. And then we have a majority, um, house. Yeah. And so, uh, with that, um, we were able to kind of stimulate the economy with a stimulus package, Mm -hmm. um, some, some relief funds Mm -hmm. and the, the largest relief funds, um, are coming now. And St. Louis City got probably the most money in the in the whole state yeah. um, as it, as it relates to relief funds. And you all got approximately how much? Five hundred and seventy million dollars. Half a billion. Half a billion dollars. Now, that could really change yeah. some things in a community. You know, I. I I'm from a small community <laughs> called the, the great city of Jennings. That's right. And, you know, uh, we got about two million, which, you know, feels yeah. feels real good to get two million dollars yeah. uh, of relief. Yeah. Um, and so uh, with those funds, uh, you all are in the beginning of a new um, administration uh, and leadership um, in, in the city of St. Louis. So mm-hmm. with that. Uh, the, the, the new agendas come, mm-hmm. um, the old way of doing things is out the door. Um, but when you're looking at a half a billion dollars, um, that causes for lots of collaboration right. and planning. Right. And when you have collaboration and planning and large funding, you're going to have some people that are they do not agree on certain things. Mm-hmm. 
And so the city of St. Louis, uh, well, the, the new, the newly elected mayor, uh, the honorable Tashara Jones, um, she, um, she's, she just got elected. Uh, she has all this momentum, uh, behind her. Uh, she's fired up and ready to go and has all of these ideas. Um, she has appointments to make. Um, she's settling into the office, um, but she's really hitting the ground running. But the, the biggest thing um, in her administration, uh, well, one of the biggest things, because there are a lot of big things, but excuse me, one of the big things is how will the city of St. Louis spend this funding? Mm -hmm. And I know with this funding comes a lot of uh, uh, restrictions, because when you're dealing with federal funds, right. um, there's a process. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are rules, um, there are regulations. And so uh, when, when it comes to spreading that money around, um, you all as the board of aldermen, you're responsible. You're responsible for one, making sure some of that money get to your awards. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, making sure the money is spent uh, effectively and in the best way. And you guys want to maximize how you spend that funding. And so it's my understanding that the alder, not the alder, uh, Madam Mayor has put together this, um, I guess, task force or board, yeah, yeah. advisory board yeah. uh, made up of stakeholders. Um, and then you have the board of aldermen who's already been there and uh, the president of the board of aldermen. Um, you all have ideas of how um, you think the money should be spent because you all have you know, pretty much been there and not to take nothing away from the mayor. Cause she's, she's been in the treasurer's yeah. office or what have you. Yeah. Um, so the mayor comes up with this, uh, plan and the president of board Alderman has a plan as well. Uh, and is the, and is the plan that the president of board Alderman represent, does it represent, um, the ideas from the board of Alderman? Um, so, or is it a mixture? <laughs> uh, so, typically, how it goes. So, the mayor has a proposal. Mm -hmm. um, she will go to the president of board of aldermen, that being her counterpart on the board of ENA. Okay, which is the city's uh, top fiscal body that okay. you know, consists of the the mayor, of course, the president of board of aldermen, the comptroller. So that, um, that but before you go on, so that puts the president of board alderman in a unique situation as yeah. it relates to a government body because he's the only yeah. person that has legislative power yeah. and executive power at yeah. the same time yeah that puts him in a unique uh position okay uh, right so uh the mayor will go to the president and say these are my ideas mm -hmm. the president will draft up legislation because he's the one that introduces legislation on behalf of the board of ena to the board of aldermen okay so he will draft up the legislation. Uh, the, the legislation will go through his process. It will get sent through committee. We will have our debate on it, our litigation on it, uh, our deliberations, all of that jazz. We'll have our public input. Then it goes back to uh, uh, the four board of aldermen where we debated some more, mm -hmm. amended some more, deliberate some more, fight a little bit more. Right. Uh, then we pass it. We send it to the mayor for passage. Uh, that's how it go. Uh, so with the president's uh, board bill right now, uh, board bill number two, uh, most of it, uh, about 80 percent of it mm -hmm. comes from the mayor's proposals uh, because we respect that. Right. She's the mayor. She was elected to lead this city. Mm -hmm. uh, she was, you know, she she's she's the leader. Right. She's a chief executive of the city of St. Louis. We respect that. So about 80 percent of her recommendations and her proposals uh, are incorporated into the board bill that's currently going through the process uh, at the board of aldermen right now. Um, uh, so uh, our first installment of that half a billion dollars is coming. Mm -hmm. uh, we ex uh, we're getting 80 million roughly uh, right now uh, is what we get. That's our first installment. Uh, 5 million is going to uh, youth sports and programming. 14 million is going to, uh, uh, addressing the homeless and unhoused situation. You got another 20 million going to the affordable housing uh, trust fund, uh, 6 million roughly going to economic relief. 
uh, about 10 million going, 20 million, another 20 million going to expanding vaccination sites and expanding uh, 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 health resources uh, for city residents. So, and all of these are recommendations that the mayor's task force uh, helped the mayor come up with, okay. which we respect, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that is the issue that I have. Uh, and, and, and I did uh, make the mayor uh, aware of my issue with it. Mm -hmm. um, the board she appointed as our task force uh, cannot do the job of the board of aldermen. Right. Right. Uh, they can't legislate for North City. Mm -hmm. I legislate for North City. Right. Uh, the other aldermen I work with legislate for North City. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they can't propose board bills and, 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 and laws. Okay. The board of aldermen does that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and that was that was an issue, right? Uh, because that, that stimulus advisory board thought that whatever they did should be law. And they ain't how this going down, right? right? Uh, and on that stimulus advisory board, uh, she appointed one member from the board of aldermen that to sit a, on that task force. That was the next question I was going to ask. Yeah. I was going to ask, did you all have any type of representation on the... The, the the task force now now with uh, the with the task force um so I'm assuming they had um, scheduled meetings mm -hmm. now now are these planning mm -hmm. meetings or planning sessions or they are public public meetings they were public they were, they public. were public through Zoom so did a lot of uh, aldermen sit in on those yeah uh, planning yeah some of us did some of us tuned in when we can when we had the opportunity mm -hmm. to uh but the issue is. Uh, on that task force, on that stimulus advisory board, one member of the board of aldermen sat there, and 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 I just believe in being transparent, open, and honest. Mm -hmm. It was my colleague from the fifteenth ward, uh, uh, Megan Green. Okay. I have a lot of respect and admiration for her. Uh, she's a fighter. Mm -hmm. Can't take that from her. She a fighter, right? Uh, but she's the only member of the board of aldermen that was appointed, and she is from a white affluent South city neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Now we're, when you're talking about receiving federal funds right. from the Biden administration to address uh, 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 post COVID, right? Right. We're talking about health disparities. Mm -hmm. We're talking about critical needs, right? Uh, the health disparities are in North St. Louis. The most critical needs of residents uh, that you will find are in North St. Louis, right? Uh, and we did not have that official representation in any capacity present at that uh, uh, special task force that Mary created. Hmm. Not taking anything from the members that she appointed, right? Because each of them brought something different to the table. Right. But nobody was there to represent North St. Louis. Hmm. And, and, and that was the issue that that a lot of aldermen had, right? Uh, that was the issue that the Black Caucus had uh, in the Board of Aldermen. And I believe that was the issue that the president of the Board of Aldermen, Lewis Reed, had. Uh, but with that, most of their recommendations uh, that they gave to the mayor, mm -hmm. that the mayor gave to the Board of Aldermen, we like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. Okay, but this don't make sense. Right. Okay, this makes sense, but we can change this or do something different. Mm -hmm. So again, about 80% of her uh, recommendations are incorporated into the official legislation right now. Uh, uh, that's again going through that legislative process. So, so having having conversations, I'm I'm not I'm not sure if you had conversations with the president of Board of Aldermen, um, but having conversations with uh, the president of Board of Aldermen, if you had, um, has there been any type of compromise between what the mayor wants versus uh, you all's rebuttal, or mm -hmm. has it just been? This is what I'm recommending, and I want y'all to pass it. Is that yeah. is that um, yeah. is that yeah. what I'm understanding? Yeah, I mean, uh, the process is ongoing uh, mm -hmm. right now. Again, it's it's still in the legislative process. It's it's working its way through the uh, the HUDS committee, the Housing, Urban Development, and Zoning Committee in the Board of Aldermen, uh, currently chaired by uh, uh, my colleague from the 22nd Ward, Jeffrey Boyd. Uh, so it's currently in that committee. We did a couple of uh, public hearings on it. We did some amendments to the bill, uh, uh, most of which she agrees with our amendments. Uh, there is one uh, uh, thing that she does not agree with with the bill, and that is uh, uh, we we defunded uh, roughly $5 million that would be direct relief fund to city residents in increments of $500 per resident 
right? We took that out of the legislation that she that she uh, uh, that she proposed uh, in her official proposal. And I th I uh, think that's one of the hot topics that yeah. that's really um, yeah. out there in the public eye. You know, all the other stuff, people on all the other nuances, yeah. people aren't really um, talking about. Um, and one of the things that folks are talking about is the five hundred dollar relief. Mm -hmm. Now, talk a little bit about uh, that issue. Um, what what is well, what is the what is the issue with that part of the proposal? Help help the audience understand because uh, I, I hear folks on on both ends of the spectrum. Some folks saying. Ah, uh, nah. Uh, we don't need to do that. Uh, everybody's not going to get their fair share. What is five hundred dollars really going to do? Mm -hmm. uh, but then on the other hand, you like you, you hear folks that say we really need that five hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's folks that go to payday loan companies and and borrow five hundred dollars for three hundred and seventy five dollars just to get the five hundred dollars. Right. Um, or I, I need I need. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm trying to figure out how to pay for my medicine and or, or do something for my kids, and I can't do both. And so, what 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 is the what is the real issue behind that uh, whole situation? Uh, because I I know you know five hundred dollars ain't a whole lot of money um, to some people. They get the hanks up off you, but it'll definitely get the <laughs> hanks up off you, and it and it'll do something for. <laughs> It'll do something for a lot of households yeah. to have an extra five hundred dollars yeah. uh, come in with no strings attached. So yeah, kind of talk to that, Alderman. No, that's a fact, right? Uh, and, and I think on its on a fundamental level, mm -hmm. uh, on its basis, right? I don't think any uh, city legislator would be against giving residents an extra five hundred dollars. The residents who need it. And, and, and that's what we come into right now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there is no process and plan put together uh, uh, to distribute uh, these monies. Okay. Uh, and we're talking about this this five million for direct relief, right? Mm -hmm. This is not going to be like the federal government, who everybody under a certain income level got yeah. checks, right? right? It's right. not set up like that, right? This is set up for people who apply. Uh, who have to go through this rigorous process to prove that they were impacted by COVID, right? Prove that they lost their job uh, uh, in, in different criteria basis. Uh, go through this process, apply for it, and maybe you get it right. Mm -hmm. How can we effectively assure that these funds are going to the people who need it? Right, I represent a ward of thirteen thousand people. Right, I got an unemployment rate above the national average. Mm -hmm. So more than 11% of my ward is unemployed. Right. I know they need the checks, mm -hmm. but they're unemployed. So they can't prove that they lost their job because they don't have a job to begin with. Right. Because of the social uh, uh, conditions that has plagued North City. And and, and, and and this didn't happen, you know, in the last two years or the last four years or the last 10. This has been ongoing uh, uh, at the detriment of North City for the last <sighs> For the last, you know, two decades. Right? So, so how many people live in, in the city of St. Louis? You have roughly 300, uh, 310,000 people. 310,000 people. Right. So let's so just say we give everybody 500. 500. That's a hundred. Um, that's a hundred and fifty five million. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> with, under the current proposal with six million, you know, you look in that 10,000 people who are yeah. going to get a check. Right. Yeah. I, I, I got more than 10,000 people in my ward who, and I t they all need to check. Right. The, the average income in my ward, again, is is, is at $22,000 per household. Yeah. Right. So all of them need a check. Mm -hmm. But I know that everybody in the 21st ward is not going to get a check. I know everybody in the third ward who's uh, who's very similar uh, in social status to my ward is not going to get a check. Right. I know that we have, we have poor people throughout the city of St. Louis in the Century West and in. In, in Southwest City, right? Mm -hmm. They're poor, uh, and and under the current plan, they will qualify to get a check, right? Right. So, how are we actually going to distribute this to where it is a a a, a equitable plan across mm -hmm. the board? And when you look at our city, when you look at uh, uh 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 the characteristics of our city from north to south, the need is in North St. Louis, and I don't want to sound like I'm beating that 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 dead drum, but but it's reality. If we're not taking care of North St. Louis first, mm -hmm. if we're not taking care of North St. Louis just on general point, just on GP, mm -hmm. then we ain't talking about nothing, right? right? 
So now we can fund six million. Now we can fund this six million dollars for COVID uh, direct relief. We can fund this six million dollars for COVID direct relief. Uh, but if we're not giving to the people who need it, are we actually making a change? Or are we just spending money to spend money right. when we could have appropriate that money to another use? Mm -hmm. And if we don't have a real process to do it, then uh, 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 then it's just fiscally and socially irresponsible. Yeah. And, you know, that's what I was. I was really concerned when I because when I first heard it, I'm like, man, why do I want to give, you know, them, <laughs> you know, them people that money. But now yeah. when I actually do the math yeah. based off the population. Um, and I know some of that is kind of skewed a little bit because we think about kids and all that type yeah. of stuff. But that's a lot of that's a lot of money if you try to give to everybody. Yeah. And to say that you're only gonna appropriate five million yeah. is not getting to everybody. Right. Um, which is interesting. Right. Uh, because like I said, a lot of people they just they hear the they hear the buzzwords or they hear what's going on in the in the news or what's being said. Um, and that's interesting because I, I, I haven't heard much about the process of how this money is going to be distributed. Yeah. I haven't heard who exactly is going to get it. What's the criteria? Um, and and I can now I can kind of see the pushback um, from the folks who are pushing back. Um, I, and I, I recently saw a couple of days ago that the, the clergy coalition got together and uh, they were yeah. pleading, they were pleading for, for, um, for you all to put this back um, in the budget. Um, they were pleading for you all to just go along with the proposal. Um, and, and you have to definitely make sure you educate yourself on the proposal um, before you want criticize it, but, um, before you go along with it too. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're going to go along with it, you, you best to have your facts in order. And if you're going to be against it, you best to have your facts in order. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, this, this, this is a very, very interesting discussion. So so what do you say to um, the folks that call your phone and say, because I'm sure you got plenty of phone calls <laughs> uh, once it hit the news. Yeah. So, so what do you say, what's your message to yeah. the community about um yeah. about this proposal and, and why you guys are doing this like what's what's your overall message yeah you know uh you know when this came up in the huds committee hearing uh just this particular uh facet of the bill uh and the vote came um i respect the way everybody voted because everybody voted the way they believe they should i voted present mm -hmm. right i didn't vote for it i didn't vote against it uh i just voted present mm -hmm. um because i know you know, I know the optics. Like yeah. We got to be running the optics. You got you got North City Alderman voting against uh, uh, supposedly direct relief and five hundred dollars to uh, a, a city resident. Mm -hmm. You know, just the optics of it, right? right. Uh, but something, and, you know, that's the that's the crazy thing about being an elected official. You experience it all the time mm -hmm. as a as a councilman in the great city of Jennings. Yeah. Uh, uh, you experience it too, right? You have to make those tough decisions. Right. And no matter how much you try to explain your decision <coughs> or you try to uh, uh, put that rationale behind it to make it make sense, mm -hmm. you know, people are going to, you know, uh, 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 just feel how they feel or see what they see or they're going to believe what they heard. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so I definitely got some calls from some of my constituents. Uh, some, some of my lawyer supporters called me. Uh, some of my not so loyal supporters called me. And I just explained to them that it has to be a plan in place because if it's not a plan in place, uh, this is not going to serve you. Right. And my job is to protect you. My job is to fight for you. If I vote for this, then I truly feel like I have not fought for you because uh, I could fight for you and we can get some real amendments in there that that dissects this down a little bit. Right. That puts this 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 relief funding and targeted neighborhoods and targeted uh, households. Right. Let me fight for you a little bit, and I guarantee you it's going to be better than it is right now in this current form. Uh, but uh, I've talked to the president of the Board of Aldermen, uh, Lewis Reed. Shout out to the president. I've talked to him. Uh, I've talked to it, other members of the Board of Aldermen. And there is there is uh, 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 working going on right now to try to figure out how can we 
get this relief fund in the pockets of the people that need it the most with a real tangible plan, right? If we need to create some type of universal uh, cash assistance program, let's do it. But how do we make sure that it gets in the pockets of the people that need it the most, the pockets of the most vulnerable, uh, uh, just the people who are relying on this to pay their bills, right? I could use an extra 500. Right. I know I'm not going to get it, but <laughs> I wish, right? I'm just, I'm just going to ask you for it. That's all. Uh, <laughs> Good luck. But <laughs> but how do we get this to the people that really need it? And if we can come up with that plan, if we can come up with that process, if we can come up with something tangible and something concrete and what that really looks like, mm -hmm. then we're going to go with it. We're going to pass it. Uh, but we are not, I'm not going to support something. And I know that it's, it's fallacy. I know that it's like chasing uh, uh, spaceships and unicorns. Right. It has to be real and tangible for my community because my community go through so many problems, man. And and like I said earlier, my community just wants somebody to be real with them. They want realism and, and authenticity. And I'm not going to sell them dreams. Uh, uh, I'm not going to sell them some fake solutions that look good, you know, in a newspaper headline. And that, it has and, to be real. And you know, that's the thing that I when I when I saw that this money was coming down, because this is the second round of money. Um right. You know, everybody received a stimulus, uh, direct stimulus from the feds. Yeah. Um, then they they sent um, some money when when um, Mayor Lida Crewson was in for yeah. for that emergency uh, relief for the cities and things like that, because yeah. we received about a million and a half as well. And we did things to to set our um buildings up for for to for people to be safe and practice social distancing and to clean things and all, all the emergency things we got relief for mm -hmm. this funding that they're sending um it's my understanding is to help recover from um the lack of funds that that that, that we may have missed out on because of businesses were shut down so we wasn't bringing in tax dollars and, and you know when i heard that this money was coming and it wasn't a, a sense of urgency to spend the money like it was when that first relief came in, because I think we got until what, 23, yeah. 2023 to spend yeah. this money. And so I thought that it was very important that us as leaders thought of something um, that was not only um, instant, mm -hmm. but something that was sustainable for our community. Because, man, we probably would never see, um, you know, funding like this. Again. Uh, again, you yeah. know, and we have to we we can't drop the ball on it. Yeah. And we got to make sure that we stop doing one offs and do some sustainable yeah. uh, inv investment uh, with this money. Because, man, you're talking about a half a billion dollars, man, yeah. um, that, that isn't tied to your regular budget. Yeah. We need to make sure that we are being very responsible and smart about the investment and the money and not wasting it, man. Because like mm -hmm. I said, man, it, this could be the last time we see uh, anything like this. And if we just yeah. give it away yeah. um, without a solid plan, man, you know, I think we'll be doing the community a disservice with these funds, man. And, you know, I'm glad that you all are being thoughtful. Um, you know, some people will call it political and say, Oh, it's, it's a political football. And, you know, uh, this group don't like that group and that's why they doing this. And, you know, I really don't believe that, you know, uh, I know some things are political mm -hmm. and, and some things are personal. Um, but I think, uh, I think it is important that you all take your time, um, when planning to spend this money and, and making sure that you all are investing in things, um, that are sustainable, man, and, and, and come up with some measurables and some goals and some outcomes, uh, for this money, you mm -hmm. know, cause you know, we, we, in our lifetime, we might not see nothing like this again, man. And, yeah. you know, it's very important that you all, um, be good stewards of the money. Cause that's the, the reason we're in the positions that we are, mm -hmm. uh, to be good stewards of the money, man. So, but man, we, we coming down to the, the tail end of our show, man. Um, is there anything that, you know, any last, remarks that you want to mm -hmm. give about this subject matter and uh where folks can get in contact with you if they have any other direct questions because i do want to get you back on the show man as this thing um starts yeah, moving man. and everything and i would like to have a conversation with uh the mayor of the city of st louis and the president of the board of aldermen uh to kind of get their take but it's always good to get the perspective of 
of the folks that's down on the ground as well, um, working directly in the trenches, man. So that was another reason why I really wanted to, to yeah. get you on, man. And, you know, it's hard to explain all of that in uh, 20 <laughs> minutes or 30 <laughs> minutes. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but man, I really appreciate you coming on today, man. But if you have any final words, man, definitely go ahead and, 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 and uh, give us those final thoughts uh, about this whole situation and anything overall. Yeah, man. Two minutes. Two minutes, I promise, right? Two minutes means six minutes to any elected official. <laughs> <That's right>. uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, when you, when you talk about their framework for having uh, everlasting impact with this federal money, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, and President Reed uh, worked with uh, Alderman on, on both sides, North and South, to come up with some funding packages for major commercial corridors uh, in the city, right? So uh, in this funding package that we have right now, $5 million goes to commercial development along Natural Bridge. $5 million goes to commercial development along West Florissant, uh, which borders the city of Jennings. That's right. $5 million goes uh, to commercial development along North Grand. $5 million goes, $20 million is going to commercial development along Martin Luther King, stretches from one side of the city to the other side, literally from border to border. <laughs> Right. So uh, uh, we put some some packages uh, in there to make sure that we have an everlasting impact. Uh, and we and we try to do everything that we can to make sure that this funding is going to be spent wisely yeah. and that we are prioritizing uh, uh, our needs uh, uh, and everything that we want to see done in our city. And I'll just say to any resident who who sees the fighting, mm -hmm. who sees the bickering or who sees political football. Uh, I would say to any resident, man, just you have a voice in this process. Reach out to your elected officials. Reach out to your alderman. Reach out to the president of the board of aldermen. Reach out to, to the mayor. Reach out to the comptroller. Reach out to your elected officials and express how you're feeling because if we don't know how you're feeling, uh, then we're doing a disservice to you because we're not taking that with us. Right. Uh, but I can say this for a fact, and I believe this goes for every one of my colleagues in the board of aldermen. We are all working to make the quality of life better uh, for our residents in our respective wards. Now we have to make it better for everybody in the city, right? We just can't keep thinking, you know, I got to make sure my ward taken care of. Right. Uh, I got to make sure this city taken care of because it's going to impact, it's going to impact all of us, uh, no matter where we live or where zip code we stay at. Uh, but man, I want to thank you for inviting me on, man. It was a pleasure. I'm a fan of this podcast. I've been watching it. Man, you definitely be doing your thing. Thank you for having me on. And the mayor and the president board of Alderman would love to come on. And and I would and I have man so much respect for both of them. Uh, they both got their own agendas. They both got their own platforms. They both got their own uh, beliefs. But I truly believe that both of them are doing what they think is best. Uh, so shout out to shout out to my bosses, the mayor and the president of the board of Alderman. Shout out to them, All right? Uh, and shout out to you. Councilman Wilson for having me on your show, man. Man, I appreciate you coming in, man. And there you have it, man. Uh, we have another show in the books. Uh, be on the lookout next week for another edition of the Politics Podcast. Uh, you can catch us on Spotify. You can catch us on Amazon Music. Anywhere, man. You know, you ain't got no excuse. We out here. <laughs> but I appreciate you all uh, tuning in. And we'll see you all next Sunday. Have a good one.